We have quorum, Jonte. Thank you so much for that, Nicole. Okay, Michael Pitts just joined. Michael. Good cab meeting yesterday, Michael. Gosh, was that yesterday? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I know we were all just sitting in our spots talking, but I felt like I had a little bit of a workout after that one. I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was just me. <laughs> it's possible. <clears throat> that was funny. Nicole, so it's 10 30 and we're gonna start. And we'll yeah. set this over here. We we'll do roll call introductions, and if you want, everyone else can introduce themselves in chat, or if we have a small group today, it's up to you. We can Yeah, we have a pretty them. small group. Yeah, I think we can go around today. I see only nine participants on. Uh, so we'll start by obviously introducing uh the cab members. I'm missing a J on my name there, huh? Um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see a J little icon, so I kind of completed it with that. So <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, so I'm John Tate, cab member. Ozzy, would you? Ozzy, cab member. Uh, Michael Pitts, uh, cab member. Terrence, are you there? Oh. Yeah. Um, Karen Deshaies from Center Force. I'm working from my home office today and I'm not camera ready. No worries. <laughs> Dr. Terrence Cole, cab member. I'll start. Uh, let's see. Jana. Good morning, everybody. Jana Evans, Office of Education. Melvin. Good morning, Melvin Russell uh, with the probation department. Dale. Dale Harrington, cab applicant. Well, you're an alternate. Dale too. is, yeah. <laughs> He's an applicant oh. for a voting member, the next opportunity. <laughs> right, right, right. Thank you for that, Nicole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's not take away from all you do, Dale. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and then Monique. Hi, I'm Monique Tate with the Office of Reentry and Justice. And Nicole Popchek, I'm also with the Office of Reentry and Justice. I think that that's everyone. Yes, it is. Okay, we'll move on I to. Go ahead. Are you going to do announcements? Because I do have an announcement. If um, others uh, I was just gonna don't say have that. any, <laughs> <laughs> any announcements? Does anyone else have any before ORJ goes? No? Uh, just a quick announcement. So I just, we have some reschedules of some of the CAB meetings and I just, cause I have it incorrectly on here. Things have changed since we posted this. So uh, the CAB, the next CAB general meeting has been rescheduled for Wednesday, the November 17th from two to four. Um, and for those members, uh, you should have an invite on your calendars that reflect that. And then the outreach and community engagement subcommittee has also been rescheduled uh, for their November meeting for Friday, uh, October 22nd from 10.30 a.m. to noon. And um, I'm not sure if this would fall under announcements, but essentially uh, there's a couple agenda items here that we may not need to cover since we approved the budget proposal and the policy brief at yesterday's general meeting, but we can discuss that when we get to that meeting or that item. Okay, thank you for that information, Nicole. Mm -hmm. All right, and I think the public, no one else had any other announcements. Let's move on to line item two, any public comment on any item under the jurisdiction of the community advisory board that is not on this agenda? Is that you, Michael? Are you raising your hand, virtual hand? Yeah, I had an announcement, uh, Jante. Go 
Okay. okay. Um, I just wanted to repeat that that there are we are hiring for a couple of positions at um, Health Right Six Three Sixty the Reentry Network. Um, there will be something um, emailed out. I think most of the people around here are on that email blast, but we are um, looking for a clinician and a um, SUD counselor, a case manager who has um, SUD um, registration or accreditation. So be on the lookout for that. If you're interested, it, it will be posted um, on our website for Health Right 360. Thanks. Yes, I have that in my inbox right now from Andrea, and I'm going to forward that out to our network, Michael. So, I think you already forwarded the one for. I know I got one for uh, uh, Center Force. Yes, and, this would be uh, for the Austin network. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, there was one from Health Right. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I actually out. seen oh. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That came. Okay. Right, right. That's why I sort of was just uh, tagging along when Michael was speaking because I seen the SUD component <laughs> and oh, got excited okay. there. Like, yeah. Okay. But it never hurts. Well, I'll, I'll double it. confirm. Otherwise, you might get double double whammy <laughs> announcements. But at least the word will get out for sure. Right. 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 Well, I don't think I don't think the uh, the the FOC the case manager has been out. The okay. maybe the clinician that was mentioned, but um, I believe the uh, the case manager is actually just getting posted on our web. Just got posted on our site uh, yesterday. Oh. Yeah. I have both those job descriptions in my inbox right now from your office. So we'll, we'll get that notified or sent out uh, to our, our network. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that, Michael. Anyone else? All right. So now we'll move on to line item three. We'll take a few minutes just to review um, our minutes from the September 17th policy and budget subcommittee meeting, and then we'll move forward after that to vote on to approve those minutes. I believe that's attachment one. I know Jill had a modification that I, I have documented on my end, and I'm happy to share what it is, but it's just a comment that she made that she sent to me. Uh, she mentioned it in yesterday's general meeting, and I, I'll be modifying it with that. Okay, thank you for that, Nicole. Can we all please mute our microphones? I'm hearing just a little background noise there. I'm not too sure who it is. Thank you for that. Well, I do have a motion to approve the minutes uh, from our last meeting with the amendment, the correction, I should say, or amendment from uh, from Jill Ray. Mm -hmm. I second that motion. So we have Michael raising a motion. We had Ozzy that second. We can now do a roll call. Ozzy. Aye. Dante. Aye. Michael. Aye. Terrence. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Move on to line item four. Uh, discuss and approve fiscal year 22-23 community uh, program budget proposal and narrative and which actually got voted and approved on yesterday. Um, so I think we're just going to just sort of recap. I know Dr. Terrence, were you in attendance yesterday? You know, I was in and out just having technical difficulties at the, at the workplace, you know, <laughs> coming back on the set. Yeah, so I was in and out um, and uh, Nicole actually sent the minutes to me, you know. Nice. So, yeah, it went thoroughly, you know, I wasn't there to stay, but, you know, I was in and out. Okay, and you were able to uh, review those minutes? 
Well, yeah. I haven't done the meet at minutes yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I mean, you might have re reviewed the agenda packet, but the minutes will come at the next meeting in November. Um, oh, okay, okay. But I, I can talk, if Terrence, if you, we can talk about it now too, we'll recap, but I'm happy to talk offline with you what the outcome was. Sure, sure, that'll work. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, and I, and I was only mentioning that, Terrence, because it was pretty eventful. You know, we had a few uh, suggestions, um, you know, some great, great suggestions that was obviously um, offered to us. Um, overall, we chose to, you know, keep everything as is. Um, just going with the status quo with the 3% increase for all of our CBOs, mm -hmm. um, as well as just um, primarily highlighting, I think Patrice done a very um, excellent job um, just letting um, individuals on the call know that this was, you know, just our template as far as the CBOs on there. We do not know exactly who will be um, obviously receiving the funding at this time. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, we did approve this yesterday um, at the uh, numbers that you see that's listed in an attachment too. So um, if anyone else just had any comments, um, just surrounding yesterday, obviously it's already approved, but at least it's just um, as a starting point, you know, as, as a kicker, if anyone just wanted to mention their thoughts from yesterday on it. Michael? Hey, uh, yeah, um, John, I, I do have a comment and kind of as I, I'm looking at the lineup here in this meeting and it appears that everybody here is gonna be coming back and, and uh, one aspect, I believe, of of uh, our full be our full meeting, kind of discussing this, that maybe I didn't articulate, was that there may be some great ideas and maybe more specific ideas that are coming from the board, but we're also against kind of the the time frame, and so. I guess I would just leave where the hope, the, the hope and the idea is that going into the new calendar year of, of CAB, that the retreat, the hope is, is that you can actually come out of that with some ideas on what direction the board actually wants to go. And maybe I'm, I'm trying not to talk around it, but even if, if, there, if we're gonna actually kind of maybe think out the box and maybe wanna do some things that haven't been done before, um, I know there's been discussion about, yes, we're an advisory um, board. We're looking at, here I go with my pie analogy, we're looking at the pie and we're just basically looking at how that pie is distributed. I know a question early on is where, um, is there going to be uh, situations and opportunities for us to, to recommend? And again, it is just a recommendation uh, addition or that more money should be spent specifically in this area, which was kind of brought up yesterday. So I think I just want to just kind of leave with you folks as you go forward in the next board. And then, you know, you're going to have this next uh, year of policy and budget. If that's a direction that the board wants to go in, that's something you really have to get traction on earlier on in the process. Because we're really at, you know, we can see the finish line where we are now. Mm -hmm. So I hope that wasn't too meandering. Uh, in my mind, it, it made sense what I was saying. But <laughs> I hope... Um, yeah, I mean, that that would just be my comments, and I hope it makes sense. And if there's any questions, please. Um, I had a question. <laughs> my, my question is, uh, so some of the call outs that were made that you're that you're talking about from yesterday's general meeting um, that were requests to impact all agencies that receive AB1, AB 109 funding. I'm wondering, just kind of in retrospective, how those requests uh, which particular deliverable those requests should go in if it's beyond community programs. I'm wondering if it's more of a policy brief item, 
if we're going beyond uh, changing or suggesting a recommendation beyond community programs, but if it's very specific request change for community programs, that it would be part of the budget proposal. That was kind of one of the, the learnings I had yesterday. And so I just, I'm just putting that question out there for the group. Uh, I think it would be more of a policy brief item, um, but just wanted to throw that out there. Well, um, but, but even so, I but I agree, we should get ahead of it. I agree with, with you. If, with if, if, uh, if, if, if the, if the board is deciding that they're really going to be thinking outside the box or doing something, um, that's significant, um, then, yeah, I think that's something that, um, the idea would be early on to start looking in that, um, to look at that. So. I, that's just 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 more of my comment on it. I mean, I know we voted on it, and and uh, you know the document we're looking at with the, with a few edits is what, what what we're going with. Yeah, I have a question, hey, Michael, and that's a good point. When you say get ahead, what does that look like? What's the time frame on that? In a comfortable way of getting ahead and making sure we're we're more in advance ahead to make sure we make some you know, decision so, that's, that's so, so, so let's, so let's just say, so an example would be, and, and uh, just so you know, we're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do everything I can, you know, with, with Jante and, and, and ORJ that's just to try to make sure that the retreat is just as enriching and as informative as possible. But what I mean by getting ahead of it, so like this has been raised uh, about, mental, just to say about mental health services, or if it was about um, restorative justice, say, for instance, if if this board came out of the, the retreat in February, knowing that this is something that they're going to really be focusing on and looking at for this year, then that's getting ahead of it, where it would be geared up, you could be geared up really early for having the understanding. I think that's one thing that was brought up too, where you know, was there a clear understanding on what mental health services each of these folks are doing? And, you know, and those questions, how would you come up with 20%? How would you come across a, across the board dictate? So that's what I mean, uh, kind of getting ahead of it, because I know my first year with CAB, we came out of the retreat with kind of a, at least a couple of things that that's going to be our thing this year. And I and I felt like that's something that we kind of missed in the last two. Last yeah, last year was just the whole crunch of uh, of COVID, and then this one that was kind of the question. You know what what is going to be our our thing for this year? So that's what I mean by kind of getting ahead of it and figuring out how to come out of the retreat with. Maybe even a couple, even if it's one focus, you know, this is something we're really going to be, you know, banging on this this year for CAP. Yeah, hey, thanks for that. And, and just to piggyback on that, I also think that Terrence, as far as the uh, subcommittee, the, you know, policy and budget um, with some of the suggestions that was raised yesterday in both those departments, but just using the mental health portion, I think we got a lot of great feedback as far as um, from Michael with, you know, really dictating um, as well as exactly um, how the CBOs and the other um, organizations that receive 8109 funding would actually implement that direct percentage in which we would um, place inside of the policy brief. And, and, and is that easy, and if that's even doable? Because, you know, what we see is a lot of the CBOs, they offer mental health services, um, a lot of the other, um, organizations that receive AB 109 funding also offer those services, but just sort of trying to narrow it down to a specific percentage of what's being offered or what they're accepting as far as funding for them to spend um, just might be sort of just complicated. So with getting ahead, it would be, um, I would also offer the example of having um, maybe submission of exactly 
what type of mental health services they're offering rather than what we're placing in front of them to see what they're doing um, for individuals with mental health services um, at this time. Got it, got it. I'm not sure if Terrence was aware of what the what the request was, the, the 20%. Uh... Um, it was a, just a suggestion from Crawford, which is a great one that we um, sort of just uh, recommend or suggest to um, all organizations receiving AB 109 funding to place 20% of that funding directed towards mental health activities. So a few questions that came up is, you know, um, what type of mental health um, specific activities, um, how exactly would we go about that? And um, there was a few other just uh, great uh, feedbacks from the CBOs as far as they're already implementing those services, um, as well as I think Jill, I should have wrote it down, but she had a very excellent point. I was trying to follow along and write it at the same time while listening. Um, but back to the original question, um, Michael was stating just when we do our retreat, that's something that we will want to start working on specifically policy and budget right then and there um, to start figuring out what we're going to do rather so late in the game when we're already at, you know, October and now trying to basically backtrack to get, you know, these things sort of inside of the policy brief um, without having a clear visual of what exactly that would look like. I would just like to add that it I believe, unless I misinterpreted that it was beyond just community programs, it was community programs in all agencies, right? Even governmental right. agencies, right? Right, right. Everyone receiving AB 109 funding. And I think I asked Crawford as far as just not the CBOs, because I was aware of that, because I pretty much am connected with all of them um, as far as the CBOs. But what, por um, what type of mental health activities would they actually implement? You know, rather than just placing mm -hmm. that in the policy brief and, a, you know, a demand or a recommendation or whatever else. Yeah. So I was just curious to know. And I think that was my point to my earlier question is if it's for other agencies beyond community programs, does that go in the policy brief or would that go on our budget proposal narrative? Um, well, and, and well, and, and that 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 would depend because and that. That was a question um, <laughs> that was kind of asked, well, that we brought up is that's outside of the box. Okay, right. so we, we're oversight. Here, here's, mm -hmm. here I'm back to the pie. Here's the pie. Right. Are, are, is, is the next board going to say, well, we know you have this pie, and but you know what? We want $500,000 to go to X, Y, and Z. Or we want... Uh, you know, we've, we've researched the mental health, um, continuum of health and, and, uh, with realignment and here's what we found. And we want X, Y, and Z to go to, to one, two, three. And so that's, so for folks that are moving with the next board, if, if that's something that, um, we see valuable, then that's our opportunity to research it. Just like with the realignment. I know um, not with realignment with restorative justice, because I know I mentioned in the last meeting we had here where they talked about restorative justice, but it just seemed like I didn't have enough where there was enough, what you would say, due process that understood exactly what you know we were talking about, specific implementation. So right there, that might be two things that going forward that and I'm, I'm just throwing it out there that this board may decide, you know, coming out of February, that these are two, uh, these are two areas we're going to be really looking at this coming year. So that's, that's my two cents. Thank you. Yeah, thank you definitely for that, Michael. Okay, any other comment? All right, so I think we can all move on to uh, line item five. Um, this is another one that got approved yesterday, uh, policy brief recommendations with, I believe it was two amendments, correct? Or two corrections. Um, one from uh, Lila, and I think Michael also had it, had one. Yeah. 
I think recommendation one, Michael had an amendment and then recommendation, ugh, recommendation two, Lila had an amendment to add um, restorative justice practices within the um, detention centers, specifically I think West County and Marsh Creek. Right, no, yes, that is definitely correct. Sorry, East County, Marsh Creek. Was it, was it East County? Yeah, Marsh Creek's in Far East County. Got it. All right, so this is another item that got approved. So I think we'll just open up the floor for a few seconds to see if anyone got any feedback um, surrounding yesterday's vote. Um, I know we were kind of crunched for time there, but we did get this one approved as well. Uh, so we'll open up the floor just for a few minutes. Anyone got any feedback surrounding our recommendations? Just moving ahead. Uh, <laughs> on to uh, line item six, uh, review work plan for future subcommittee work. Um, I took a, a brief uh, look, a uh, quick look at this already. I know that one and two is already complete. Um, Excuse me, I have a question. Was there supposed to be a vote on the last line item? For the recommendations? It was if we had to take over the work that the general cab had not completed, but they did, so we don't need to vote on it. Okay, thank you. I don't, I don't know, Jonte, you want me to kind of provide an overview here. The intent was to have the uh, subcommittee review the work plan to kind of prep what would be carryover for next year, since there's actually quite a significant amount here that is either um, already been completed or um, I think specifically goal number three. Um, I know that there was a presentation that Ozzy and Dr. Hernandez had done um, or presented to the full body if there was further work there that the group wanted to um, maybe redefine or uh, speci be specific about what about it. Goal number three that's being carried over next year. And then of course, goal number four will be, you know, a recurring deliverable every year. Um, but I believe goal number one and two were completed as part of the work that the CAO has done uh, incorporating report outs at the CCP. Um, but that's why this was here, was to kind of review that. And it doesn't have to be settled on right now. It was just more of let's get ahead of it, kind of to Michael's point, like um, trying to set up, you know, have conversations so that we go into the retreat and people who decide to be on this subcommittee know uh, what we're tackling this year, this next year. All right, all right. Okay, thank you for that, Nicole. Um, Ozzy, do we have any um, new information or updates? Uh, as far as I know, you guys did a, a very excellent presentation, or I think you were on vacation <laughs> at the time, so Dr. Hernandez went ahead and done it. Um, but do we have any um, updated information that you would like to share as far as the uh, um, identifying areas of biases and disparities in the uh, county's criminal justice system? I think particularly there's always ongoing um, research that needs to be done as we continue mm -hmm. on. Uh, it's, it's a never ending um, advocacy, especially for myself and it's particularly in identifying specific populations and how, the, how that verbiage is articulated and what's being, what is being brought forward and how it's addressed and how the terminology and developing the, our, the verbiage and what we're looking for and how we can get that across to our constituents, whether it's the CBOs or 
directly the agencies that are receiving a B109 funding and what we're really wanting to see spelled out in plain English so that it continues transparency. So I believe that's ongoing. Okay. All right, and I believe as far as my portion of it go with identifying gaps um, to confront obviously racial and gender biases within the criminal justice system, um, sort of similar to what I was just explained. I'm uh, just now sort of just laying out my uh, platform for that uh, sub part inside of goal three um, to bring information back to the board as far as um, Cocoa County specific um, but some of the things like uh, Michael was also talking about, I think that when we have our retreat, obviously this one would be an excellent idea to um, add to our policy briefs as far as um, introducing certain um, recommendations to confront uh, gender and racial biases. Um, but I have no information to report back as far as right now for any research that has been conducted for this uh, part. Um, so more information to come <laughs> surrounding this part. Um, and Nicole, you said, do we have any other like comments surrounding goal three? Any ideas from any of the board members? Anyone, you know, have any uh, uh, literature or research that they know of um, in any of these uh, sub segments for us to, you know, just sort of ponder thoughts over at this time? Hey, um, I, I do have something. So um, one, I know uh, my understanding is a lot of the prop, well, the prop 47, I don't know how much we're really following that, but maybe um, if, if we're gonna leave this as an action step to, to, to look at the, the racial and gender disparities, um, maybe we should look at um, maybe somebody from the board kind of following, um, you know, we have the, the racial justice, what's the, our job, that board. Um, we do have Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice, which is brand new, so I don't know how that's going to um, play out. Um, and, but the question is, is that just going to be that goal three? Is that just ongoing? And um, maybe just work closely with our job in Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice to kind of uh, address that. So I guess that is my question. Is that something that's just going to be ongoing? I think it's going to... Yes, for definitely. Was that to me or that. to Nicole? Oh, sorry, Nicole. Go ahead. Well, I just know that our job. I mean, that's one of the biggest uh, missions of the uh, racial justice oversight body. So I, I would um, encourage uh, this subcommittee to define, I guess, in partnership with the racial justice oversight body, where CAB would, I guess, support that, and keeping in mind how this falls underneath the AB one hundred nine umbrella. Um, because that that is they're doing a lot. I mean, that's a lot of their work is, is this exactly. So, um, looking at data and, and whatnot. So, uh, I don't think we can answer necessarily that question right now. But I, I would encourage to be some follow up. Um, and and ORJ is happy to connect. Um, you know, Jonte to the chair of that uh, committee to see what what that would look like. Um, and then as far as the, the Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice, I know it's still uh, in the planning phase, um, so it, it has not been um, operationalized yet. And, and that's the one with Federal Glover, correct? I'm, I'm not sure what Federal Glover's role is in that, but... I think he's uh, the vice chair. Yeah, it was, it was Federal Glover and Joya's kind of baby, and then... Um, as far as where they're, well, you probably know better than I do, Dante, what role they play at this time, but it was their idea. Okay. No, I, I definitely agree. I think those are both excellent ideas. And thank you so much, Nicole, for the invitation to connect, yeah. um, you know, specifically. I know um, that the racial justice oversight body is looking to do a data listening session. Uh -huh. 
uh, they actually just had that meeting yesterday and they were looking for the members to go back to their networks. And I know that the network was brought up in the Reentry Success Center of getting their feedback on um, what the structure of a data listening se session should look like. Um, and so maybe that's, that's an area that uh, this group could follow up on and provide feedback from as, as a tab to what a data listening session would look like. And with, without obviously you guys knowing more details about that, it, it might be difficult to provide feedback, but we can connect you to that, um, maybe that specific subcommittee to uh, get a better understanding. So maybe you could have some feedback. Um, but that, that's one of the, the big idea. things that they're, go ahead, Jill. <laughs> No, I think that it's Ozzy. It's a good oh, idea. I'm sorry. I thought that was Jill. Sorry. <laughs> I've attended a couple of those um, subcommittees, and, and definitely there's a lot of information there. And, and I concur. Um, hopefully, that um, that can be a part of my ongoing research to actually connect with. Um, now, I'm, you know, the acronyms kind of befuddle me, but it's um, racial and equity committee that's uh, already established and they have great information. And I would definitely be willing to participate in the listening session and also report back to the subcommittee with any, any of the findings and also just kind of stay yeah. in the loop with what's going on. I know that they're, they were trying to do it this year, but it's, it's looking like it probably would be um, next year. So this could be definitely a, uh, a very specific uh, action step um, with this goal. And with, that, and with that, would it also maybe be wise? Um, I know we were speaking about the mental health portion of it, but also to introduce inside of our policy brief, um, just certain trainings to um, enhance justice, reduce bias, um, you know, just to confront biases within the criminal justice system as far as this action step go. That's something that might be feasible for also next year when we're including the uh, um, the mental health portion into the uh, into the policy brief. Um, just specific for you know um, all of the organizations that receive uh, AB one hundred nine funding. I'm pretty sure many of them have already intended like implicit bias trainings and things like that, but just to have it uh, sealed and stamped down on paper. Are you thinking of in addition to, to a, an additional goal or to incorporate that as part of the racial gender and equity piece? Um, if it's not already there, it would obviously be something additional, um, mm -hmm. but just so it can really stand out since it is one of our action steps, since it's sort of like blank right now, we, have, we do have uh, research that was done by obviously Ozzy and Dr. Hernandez, um, more to come as far as um, what I'm going to uh, research and look up. Um, from obviously out of state, as well as anything that's already been done in Coco County, as well as, you know, um, the action step of maybe assigning one of the policy and budget subcommittee members um, to attend those board meetings to get uh, to get some great suggestions, as well as, you know, give what we have back to them. Um, but to answer the question, I guess, yeah, as an addition, if it's not already there. Um, well, well, let, let me say this because I think that the disparities are going to be an overlayer for the majority of what we're looking for, like the mental health in these different areas, because as Michael stated, it's going to be ongoing. You know, we, we don't know what has happened in the past. This is the evolution of the disparities that we're looking at, the racial disparities uh, and gender disparities. So this is going to be an ongoing overlayer for all these different areas that we're focusing on. So I want to keep in mind that this is kind of a, a equitable, uh, uh, it's a time to look at equitability uh, within the scope of these disparities uh, and begin to look at, you know, what has been in the past, what's current, and what, we, what we're trying to go with it. Uh, so just a kind of a, a, a sidebar to begin to look at that as an overlayer uh, in reference to all these different areas that we're trying to focus on within policy. Uh, with this, within the subcommittee. Got gotcha. you. Okay. And that's why I'm, I'm suggesting partnering with the racial justice oversight body because the work that's being done there is to get the data, to look at the data, 
Um, and Melvin, you can speak more to this, maybe Jill, um, exactly the, the goal there, but uh, looking at the data to, to tell that story. To, um, and I just don't think that this group would be able to take on the data side. Uh, they're already doing that. So partnering with them, I think is, is definitely a good next step um, since they're already pushing for that data, data that doesn't exist and data that does, um, uh, as opposed to this group trying to start from scratch, right? Trying to discover yeah. that yourself. I concur, Nicole. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nicole, have you um, shared with this group the data dashboards that they have put together based on the data that they, um, the our job has collected thus far? I don't believe I have. I can put that in chat. Thank for for this group to see because those are phenomenal. Um, thanks to the ORJ. And um, just to piggyback on what you're saying, um, the Juvenile Justice Coordinating Council is also working um, hand in hand with uh, the Racial Justice Oversight Body um, because they recognize that the work being done there is significant. And rather than duplicating efforts, they're sort of walking side by side with them. And um, that in involves with the listening sessions as well. And um, uh, there was one, one other thing that I was thinking of, but many of our departments are working on this, this question of equity. Um, H3 has undertaken a very, very expansive um, effort to really address equity in their system as well. And um, um, so, so I think it's really good to, to look at that. Um, it has been a huge challenge to get data, um, mostly from the district attorney's office, which is a gap in our system um, because you know we can get uh, police data, we can get um, detention system data, but the DA's office is a key point in that system. And so getting um, data has been a challenge from there, but I think we're, we're moving forward with that. And then also the racial justice oversight body is presenting at the um, city, um, the mayor's conference in November um, to ask, to do an ask to the entire mayor's conference and all the, um, the city council members that attend that to provide city level data for their police departments. The ask was made of the police chiefs and it just um, sort of didn't go as far as they were hoping. So they're now making the ask at um, the mayor's conference to hopefully get that data from the 19 different cities. Um, well, actually we have it from I think four or five. Any, any contract city with the sheriff, we have their data, but the other, 14 cities, um, we uh, are not getting quite the amount of data that we really need um, at the arrest point or contact point. And the ARIES data that shows self-initiated contacts isn't going to be available for another year or two. So um, we're working hard to try and get data every which way we can. Thank you, Joe. Um, okay, and thank you, Jill, as well. Um, so I think uh, no one else really has a lot of information there, so I'm just gonna let that soak in. And um, I think we can move on to the next action, to the next line item, correct? No one else has any comment? I don't see any. Let's bring it back up my screen. Give me one second. Oh, wow. It's actually adjourning to the next subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that is true. <laughs> Um, well, so it's next steps um, would be, you know, for your November meeting, and that was also kind of uh, a segue into the remaining um, meetings that we have for the year. If if there's value in and um, in having a meeting in November and December, um, I, I could see for November because there is a, a final report that's due for this for this committee, um, and that I'm encouraging. The chairs to agendize kind of lessons learned final report highlights for the subcommittee to provide the chair uh, highlights from from this subcommittee 
um, to inform that final report. So that, that's one thing that you could talk about in November. Um, but I would also, I, I will say that I looked at last year and previous years that historically all the subcommittees for CAB have uh, chosen to cancel the December meeting, but just wanted to put that out there. Since a lot of the deliverables that you guys have been working on are at this point complete, um, they still have to be presented to the CCP, but that's, in, that's independent of meeting um, at your subcommittee. Okay. Uh, just to take one quick step back, the link that you sent was just for the arrest trends, correct? In the um, fence step? So I can't speak sure. to the data itself because that's something that Denise in our department um, uh, hold uh, on behalf of our job. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, it's just a placeholder for us to show for adults and juveniles um, the type of data that we've been pulling for our job. Um, and then it, it's a PDF that you can download to see what that data is. Um, I haven't looked at it recently, so I can't say exactly what it is. Okay. But it should specify the type of data in the- no, I, Yeah, I know I clicked on the link so far. I got mm -hmm. them up. I'll take a, a snapshot at it later. Um, yeah, no, I also agree. I think that November, us reporting out a final report in December, just taking a vote, obviously, in November, if we're going to do a December subcommittee meeting, um, what happened then, um, that's, you know, what would I see basically happening. Um, does anyone else have anything else for our next steps? I mean, I think your work plan will will need work, but that's something that I think there's time to to develop that uh, at the retreat and then and yeah. Okay then. Um, anyone else has anything? And I wanted to say, because I think I mentioned it in general meeting, but the, the CCP budget workshop was rescheduled from 11, um, November 5th to November 12th. November 12th. Yeah. So does that, does that mean that we're canceling November and December, or do we feel that we need to have a November? Well, I think for sure we should have a, no, have a November, and I think okay. in November we will probably take a vote if December is actually necessary. Okay. Um, I don't know. Does, right. does everyone feel that that's okay? Ozzy, Michael, yeah? Well, um, unless you're just going to do the report, I mean, uh, I think that would be the main thing, and it is not daunting. It is just kind of a quick synopsis of um, – what what this subcommittee's kind of done, and there is a report that's supposed to move up to um, CCP, like a yearly report uh, for CAB. And so I kind of take the information from the subcommittees, and then there's a there's a little report that goes. So this is what I agendize for the meeting to, because I, I would like to take the feedback from today and kind of work the work plan based on the feedback today and present that to you guys in November, if that's okay. Um, and then the lessons learned final report and then just approving canceling December's subcommittee meeting. Lesson learned final report, work plan. And yeah, that sounds fine with me, Nicole. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we can adjourn uh, 11 18. You all have a wonderful weekend. All right, thank you. Thank John you. All right, bye -bye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.